Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Tom Levine. I am the uh, host of our webinar series for Tech Tuesday. Uh, today, we're actually going to be covering some different ways to improve your searching online, a few different search engines, as well as the history of the uh, two biggest part of the US market share, which is Google and Bing. Uh, I also wanted to cover a few bookkeeping things before we really dug into the uh, deep and dirty stuff about web search. So uh, first off, our rewards trip for brokers. Uh, if you want to go ahead and register, you can find it under values and rewards, under rewards trip, and then click the Cruise in the Caribbean 2020 to register. Uh, all sales from the first of this year, 2019, until uh, December 31st actually qualify to uh, get sales to qualify for this trip. Uh, if you haven't already, I'd highly recommend registering if you're planning on selling insurance. Um, additionally, we also have a few other things to show you under the Resource Center. If you go under Resources and then Resource Center, you gain access to the Cornerstone white papers, as well as all of our different sections and uh, different folders for all sorts of licensing commission stuff, webinar series links, marketing, uh, anything you could really want that'll really help your business. Under the webinar series, you gain access to all the recordings for our uh, guest webinar series, the group corner, the individual corner, build your brand, and our Tech Tuesday. So if you'd like to uh, re-watch one of the presentations or if you have any questions, uh, feel free to watch there or send me a quick email. Um, also, as far as questions go for the presentation, I will address them at the end. So uh, feel free to type a question in the question box, but know that I'll answer it at the end of the presentation. Uh, the last thing I'd want to mention before we really get into it is that we're actually going to be having two special guest webinars coming up on Tech Tuesday. On the uh, 9th of July, we're going to have a webinar on data security with our friends at Web Tech who help us out with web design. Uh, and then we're also going to have another one with Connective, which is our in-house tech support. Uh, and Jeff from Connective will be going over a lot of different things for you with regard to uh, when to look for, when buying a computer, uh, what the specs mean, and uh, advice on Apple or PC. Uh, Jeff knows a lot more about the uh, hardware side of things than I do, so he will be able to help you out more there. Um, so without further ado, let's get going. Uh, the first thing I'm going to mention is that in searching online, there are a few key strategies that can help you. And I'm gonna actually show you a few of these. Uh, we're going to start in Google because that's what most people use, but then we're going to show you a few other search options. And actually my librarian would be laughing at me for presenting this. Uh, when I was in school, my librarian actually taught me the same things I'm going to show you today, and that's Boolean search parameters. Uh, Boolean search parameters is just a really fancy name for some common tools used in searching databases. Uh, these could be things such as using a placeholder for a search or uh, combining words to help narrow your search. Um, it's actually named Boolean search parameters because it's based off of a uh, series of worded mathematical operators created by George Boole in the 19th century. Uh, it combines math operators to narrow or broaden your search parameters. And don't worry, I promise we are not going to do math. Um, we are, however, going to use a few mathematical symbols. So uh, get ready if you'd like to take notes. Um, the first search I'm going to show you is one of my favorites. Uh, we're going to use a placeholder search. And what a placeholder search does is it actually takes the place of a word in your sentence. Um, just because the World Cup is going on, we're going to use the search phrase from Marta. And if you don't know who Marta is, you will in a second. Uh, let's start by doing a basic search for Marta. Uh, you get quite a few results, actually, if you do search for just Marta. Uh, you know the top stories, which are uh, the Brazil women's soccer player, Marta. Uh, she plays for Brazil, and she actually set a few world records uh, this year. So she's quite the soccer player. Um, addition to uh, soccer, though, you also get Marta, um, which if I uh, click on the link there, goes to a transportation authority website, uh, which is definitely not the soccer player. So that's probably not what you might have been searching for. Uh, it also shows the uh, Metropolitan, 
Metropolitan Atlanta Rapid Transit Authority, which is the web page we were just on, but the uh, Wikipedia results, it has sports off on the side. Uh, so Google definitely does not really know what you're talking about when you just type in MARTA. Um, what Google does is it displays all of the most relevant recent information, uh, as well as anything that was a paid ad when you just search. So by just searching MARTA, I didn't really narrow what I was looking for that much. Um, now let's say I was looking for the Transit Authority and I don't want any of this information about the soccer player, um, but I wasn't really sure about the name. In that case, I would do a placeholder search. And all you have to do for a placeholder is add an asterisk. Uh, on standard keyboards, that would be accomplished by hitting shift and then the number eight. Um, it also just has a symbol on a number pad if you're uh, using one of those. But I'm going to use MARTA. Um, and I know it stands for Metropolitan uh, Something Rapid transit. And right there is the second hit, uh, Metropolitan Atlanta Rapid Transit Authority. Um, I also get the MRT blue line for some reason. Um, that's actually because it's Metropolitan Rapid Transit blue line. And with the uh, placeholder search, it was looking for words to fill in that gap. Um, now, if I was just searching for the Metropolitan Atlanta Rapid Transit. I could just type that in. But if I want specifically those string of words, I would surround it in quotations, which is the second most useful tool that I can recommend. Uh, by surrounding your search in quotes, what it does is it limits results to those four words in that specific order. It searches Metropolitan Atlanta Rapid Transit instead of searching for Metropolitan Atlanta Rapid and Transit, all as separate words throughout articles. Um, just by searching uh, this without the quotes, I doubt I'll get much of a different result for this specific uh, request. Oh, I actually got the website. but. Um, what it does is it searches each of the individual words separately that I type in. And then if they appear anywhere in any order through the article, it'll pull it up. Um, this little description down here, uh, which is available on most search engines right now, shows you where the words hit that pulled the website up. So um, the Atlanta Transit uh, pulled up the MARTA page. Um, rail, I guess, pulled off of rapid. Uh, so it was a near hit, not an exact hit. And the reason it was a near hit, not exact, is because I didn't surround it in quotes. Um, that brings me to the last three Boolean search parameters, which, in my opinion, are not as useful as the first two, but are still very important. Um, going back to Marta the soccer player, um, one of my coworkers actually was very interested in finding out about her history. Well, Brazil was playing against Spain, I believe. Um, but when she searched for Marta, she accidentally got the score of the game that she was planning on watching later that night. And so she kind of lost interest in the game. Uh, if you're like her and want to know a little bit more about someone's history uh, while they're playing, you might want to take notes now. Uh, the first thing I'm going to show you is an exclusion search. And what that does it is it excludes words from the search parameter. So uh, let's start with Marta. But then I'm going to put in minus score. Now, um, as you can see, we still got the uh, top three searches there. Um, but if you scroll through, you actually don't see anything about a score, really. Um, and the reason for that is because we excluded score from the search. Um, this minus sign, you can't put a space in between whatever you're searching um, with the minus sign and the actual word. But what it does is it excludes words from your search results. Uh, that means if I wanted to look up history of a player without their scores, um, I could do that and pretty much avoid current gains. Um, I could also have done uh, minus the exact quote of World Cup. And it would give me any MARTA result without the words World Cup. 
Um, if I still wanted soccer, I would add plus soccer, which is our next parameter, an and search. And that gives you a bunch of really different crazy results, uh, just because Google doesn't really know what you're looking for at that point because of the uh, multiple parameters. But uh, what I'm basically doing with the plus is saying I want search results that include Marta in the word anywhere, minus the phrase World Cup, but that still includes soccer in the article. And as you can see, there's not a whole lot that includes that. Um, we get a few results about becoming a soccer lover of MARTA, um, the uh, soccer station field uh, in Atlanta. There's a bunch of different options here, including all of those phrases, uh, but it's not exactly what I want. So once again, those search parameters will really vary depending on what's out there. Um, let's say, however, I wanted to view her records. Um, I could do a and search for records, or I could do an or search. And I'll actually explain what the difference between and and or is in a moment. But for now, let's do Marta or soccer. Or no, actually, or Brazil. Now, first off, it tries to correct me to Marta of Brazil, just because Marta is a Brazilian soccer player. Um, and Google will do this from time to time. It'll prompt you to maybe change a misspelling or uh, possibly figure out what's going on with your search if it thinks you made a mistake. Uh, in this case, we did not, however. Um, as I scroll through here, uh, you see I get results from Marta, the soccer player, but I also get France Survive, sending Marta and Brazil to the exit, uh, which is a World Cup reference um, because we searched or Brazil. Uh, it brings up more about the country itself as well. Uh, Marta issues rallying cry to Brazil's future stars. Uh, so we're getting any result that includes Marta or any result that includes Brazil. Now, if I wanted to change that, I would do Marta or Transit. And what that does is it changes the search dramatically. Um, it changes it so that now what I'm looking for is the phrase Marta or the phrase Transit anywhere on a web page. And anything that has both will be prompted to go to the top. Um, so we get Marta. Prior, it's marta.com, which is a different link than we clicked on earlier. Uh, and it's about trip planning with Marta. Uh, we get a lot about trip planning here because we're searching for both Marta or transit. Uh, so it's very important to make sure you kind of think about what terms you want to include in your search. Um, but the reason Boolean search operators are so powerful is because they can be combined to narrow your results. Um, just going off this, I will go ahead and go through the differences one more time just to make sure it's perfectly clear because I know I can rush through things. Um, first off, we had the placeholder search, which was an asterisk, which takes the place of a word in your search phrase. An AND search combines two sets of results. So it would combine, if I were using MARTA and transit as a result, I would do MARTA plus transit, and it would give me any article that includes the words MARTA and the word transit somewhere in the article. If I were to do MARTA transit with quotes, it would search for the specific string of words, MARTA transit, and pull up any search result that has MARTA transit in it as a phrase, as you can see by this uh, bolded area down here. And if I wanted to exclude words, I would add a minus, uh, like MARTA minus transit. So this would search for anything including the words MARTA that do not include the word transit. And I get a bunch of socket results. Um, lastly, if I do an OR search here, I would get any page that pulls up MARTA or transit in its result. So anything with MARTA, anything with transit will pull up, um, but specifically it'll prompt two hits of the word first. So uh, that's why we get the results we get through Boolean searches. Uh, those tools are very, very useful if you're trying to narrow down search results or widen your search results. Um, the narrowers, I guess, that'll give you the least number of hits on what you're searching for would be the exclusive uh, term or the and term. 
Um, specifically, the reason and narrows it is because it narrows the search results it displays to anything with both words specifically in it. Um, not excludes unwanted items, so you would only get your search first our first search parameter if you use a not search. If you use an or search, it'll show literally everything, uh, every search result with one word or the other. Um, and using the placeholder, it will just search for anything, including the uh, parameters that you've entered with a random word in between. So that being said, which search engine should you use? Um, that's actually a question that I ask myself frequently. And uh, surprisingly, you get a different answer for a desktop or a mobile platform. Um, first off, there's Google, uh, some history about it. They are now a tech giant, but they actually launched in 1998. And I know a lot of us can't remember a world without Google now, um, but it has 92.74% of the world market share for searching. Uh, it's so prevalent that instead of saying, I'm going to go search for something, people now say, I'm going to go Google it. Uh, so that tells you just how much of a uh, corner on the market share Google has for search engines. Um, so they are very, very, very big. Um, originally, it was just a normal search engine. It used inputs like what I showed you just now uh, to search web pages for word matches, common word matches, any sort of match that you could get. And back then, these Boolean operators that I just showed you were really, really useful. Um, they could parse all your results for you. They would show you specific search results uh, that you wanted. You could even type in a URL into the search, and it would direct you to the search page. Nowadays, if you type a URL into Google search bar, it'll just send you straight to the web page you want. Um, additionally, uh, it was actually named after a number, believe it or not. Uh, Google, uh, spelled G-O-O-G-O-L, is uh, notated in scientific notation as one times 10 to the 100, which means it's one with 100 zeros after it. And the reason they named their search engine Google is because they wanted to uh, reflect just how many search results you could get using the site. Uh, their main competitor right now is actually Bing. Uh, Bing is actually a Microsoft search engine where uh, Google is its own company. Bing is the search engine jump off of Microsoft. It actually started back as a MSN search for Windows. It was the uh, default search browser on uh, Internet Explorer for a very long time. And it still actually is the uh, default search result on um, what is it now? Edge? Yeah, Edge. Um, just some brief history about it. Um, it actually became Windows Live Search before it became Bing, and it's a search engine that smart categorizes results, which is slightly different from Google. Uh, Google started to copy this about two years ago, so now there isn't as many differences between the search engines. Um, but Bing was chosen as the name to actually resemble a sound of discovery, uh, like when you have a idea, it just Bing, light bulb above your head. Uh, that's why they named it Bing. Um, the main differences that I see personally with the uh, search engines is the differences in results. Um, Marta's kind of bad to display this, so we're going to search Cornerstone on both search engines and see what pops up. Um, one of the things about Google that Bing doesn't do is Google tracks every single thing you type into it from any computer, regardless of whether you're signed in or not. Um, because I typed Cornerstone into this search engine on this computer, it'll record that this computer has Cornerstone typed into it. And if I search Cornerstone again, it'll prompt the links I've already clicked on at the top. Um, I get search results in Maps first. I get uh, Cornerstone Broker Insurance Services Agency, which is what we'd probably have been looking for. Uh, but then I also get Cornerstone Renter Equity in Dayton Bellevue Christian Center as uh, possible Cornerstone results because uh, their website mentions Cornerstone here. Um, I also get a bunch of different loan options. And uh, as you can see, I've already searched and clicked on our website here in purple from this computer, even though I'm not signed into the search engine. Now, if I look at the uh, Bing search results, I get uh, Cornerstone Corporation for Shared Equity, which I believe is, uh, I think, the website, actually, for that second Google result. Um, but I also get a Cornerstone Lifestyle Agency, and Cornerstone Broker Insurance Services Agency is nowhere on this. Um, I do see it pop up on the uh, search here. 
uh, for the Cincinnati area um, for maps. And then I also see different medical options. So as you can see, the different search engines give you different results just with one word prompts. And uh, that kind of brings me to the core of why I think Google is probably the better search engine for desktop. Um, because Google tracks all that information, it gives you pretty much all of your tailored results. Uh, it knows generally what types of things you search for, so it can prompt you about different options for what you want to search. Uh, that said, that kind of brings up the data security issue, which uh, we might have covered in our next webinar on data security, uh, 7.9. Um, if you're very concerned about internet tracking, uh, you might want to use Bing as an alternative because instead of tracking everything you search into it, no matter what, uh, it actually tracks you through pretty much just cookies. Uh, if you sign in over here, uh, you can also get personalized search results just like in Google if you want them. Uh, but one of the uh, main things you'll get on top of that, uh, because even though Google doesn't compensate you for collecting all that data, Bing does. If you sign in, you'll start getting these reward points over here. Uh, what that does, and I'm going to actually uh, go ahead and just hit sign in now, see if it will let me. Uh, now I'd have to go ahead and actually log into my account. Um, but what it actually does, if I go to Bing again, um, is it actually stores points from everything you search. So as you search, you can build up points and you can redeem those points for a lot of different things. Um, you could do a, a $5 Subway gift card. Uh, the most generous one I've seen is you can get a $25 gift card with I think it's 30,000 Bing points. And uh, you can get that gift card for um, Pandora. So you could start uh, getting music through that service if you uh, search enough in Bing. Uh, another option that uh, I personally like to do with my Bing reward points is if I'm searching with Bing a lot, I like to uh, donate the points. So what you can do is you uh, can redeem your rewards and you can redeem them to get Microsoft to donate a set amount per point value to a charity of your choice which I think is really kind of nice for everyone. Uh, another difference in the uh, home pages actually just uh, pointing it out real quick is if we go back to the main home pages uh, on the Google home page it's very bare bones even if you do sign in um, you can click on this uh, option and let's just go ahead and do Marta again but if you click I'm feeling lucky what it'll do is it'll direct you straight to the top search result for what you find so it doesn't show you all the results uh, that can be kind of useful if you just know it's probably going to be the first thing that pops up, um, but I don't really see much use for the I'm feeling lucky button personally. Uh, I much prefer the homepage on Bing, which shows you a bunch of different articles and news, uh, not really customized at all. It just kind of shows you what top articles it thinks are interesting about the day. Uh, so unless you sign in, then it'll start giving you more uh, parsed results. Um, so as you can see, we've got a lot of different articles that pop up there. If you want to just do some light reading or if something major happens, it'll prompt you for a news article. Um, additionally, uh, the thing that I like about Bing most is the image and news searches. Uh, I think Bing does a better job of parsing through images uh, with this little search thing here. And you can do this in Google too, uh, but it doesn't prompt you to, is if you drag an image into the search bar in both Google and in Bing, uh, it'll actually search off of that image and do an automatic image search based off the file. Uh, so you just drag your file from your file folder and drop it into the search engine. Um, but through Bing, it'll actually prompt you. So you can uh, click on the image there and it'll say try a visual search and it'll prompt you how to drag it in there and how to do it. Uh, with Google, it actually won't prompt you at all with how to do that image search. So Bing kind of has the edge in that in my opinion. It also has a bit of a smarter uh, tracker so it parses through the image results a little easier and compares things pixel by pixel, which Google doesn't really do as well. Um, additionally, as far as news goes, what Google is, and this kind of is the, uh, downside to using Google News. Um, if I just type in news and hit news over here. 
Um, Google News actually tracks exactly what you type in, like I said before. It collects a lot of your personal data, which means that if you click on uh, News, you'll actually get news results tailored to what things have been clicked on your computer or tailored to your specific Google account, which if you're trying to stay neutral and uh, just pick up news articles is not very useful. Uh, so what I like to do is I like to do my news searches on Bing because it doesn't track all of your um, searches. It just gives you generally what's going on in the news most recent, and it's not dependent on what type of uh, what type of thing you're looking at. Really, I've got CNN, MSN. Um, I saw a Fox article on here earlier, so it gives you a more neutral view of what's going on compared to other things. Um, now, as you see, it does have that starred for you category on the Bing search. And what that does is it does kind of do things similarly to Google, um, where it tracks search results, but it doesn't track them as accurately. Um, with Google, it'll track what you search, it'll track what you click on, it'll track all your cookies, it'll even track how much time you hover over a result. All Bing will do is track what you click through um, and collect cookies. So it's not exactly mo micro monitoring everything you're doing on the web page. Uh, as far as security goes, you might want to use Bing instead of Google. However, that brings us to our last search option, which I mentioned for people who are very concerned about their online security. Um, this is actually DuckDuckGo, which is owned by Bing. If I go to www.duckduckgo.com, it's a search engine that doesn't track you at all. It doesn't track your clicks. It doesn't track anything you do. Uh, it only searches for you. And even then, it doesn't really track your search history. If I search for Marta on this, I'll get a bunch of different options. But as you can see, it's not really limited as well to the football results. Um, this purple click link here is because I've clicked on that in the past on this computer, but not through this search engine. It's purple because I've accessed the web page before. Um, and that's something that a lot of different web pages will do. So DuckDuckGo is a very good option for privacy. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them. I believe that just about covers everything with search engines. Um, but if you have any other questions about search-related data um, or about how to narrow down your search results or anything related to any of the topics, or even maybe if you just have a separate uh, search engine that you use that you want an uh, idea of on how to use better, uh, please go ahead and enter a question here or feel free to email me at tlevine at crnstone.com. Uh, once again, just a reminder, we have that data security presentation coming up with uh, Web Tech on 7.9, and I'd highly recommend it. Uh, in our last presentation, we had a lot of questions about internet security, and uh, that is actually not my biggest field. Uh, I know a little bit about it, but it is not where I excel at. Uh, and Chris Fisher, who does a bunch of web design, would know a little bit better than I would about uh, different ways to secure your data online, uh, which is different from firewalls, by the way and he will probably get into some of the differences with that if you ask him. Um, additionally, the tech specs is really going to be useful if you're looking at buying a full PC or Apple computer. Uh, Jeff is our uh, guy from Connective, and he's really intelligent about hardware. Uh, I'm more of a uh, software guy and how to use uh, different things like that. So uh, Jeff will be a very good resource for you, uh, like I said. So thank you once again for attending. I'll be on for a few moments longer if you have any questions. Oh, and uh, additionally, I did mention um, there are two different uh, preferences I have for Google versus Bing. Uh, Google is very useful if you have a uh, desktop and are just wanting to search there. But the reason I actually mentioned Bing for mobile engines is because with Bing, if you use an Android device specifically and you live in a crowded area like downtown, it has this search function through the camera settings called 360 search. And it basically overlays all of the nearby food, coffee, or different types of categories of places uh, through the camera. So you can just kind of spin around holding your camera up and see different search results. It's really incredibly useful. Um, additionally, it parses uh, mobile searches a lot better. 
So I would recommend uh, Bing if you're looking for uh, mobile search results. All right, uh, I'm not seeing any other questions, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, end the presentation. But thank you all for coming, and I hope you had a great day. Remember, if you have any questions you didn't want to post in the chat, uh, feel free to email me at tlevine at crnstone.com. Thank you, and have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your week.